Okay, let's go. We're going to add an invoice now. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is my app. What your app's going to look like. This is the mo one of the most basic things you can do. Um, and and this is a good example. Even if you, you're tasked to do like purchase orders or bills or a an estimate, um, they have very similar structure. Headers, line items. You have a main list identity, um, what they call a list resource in QuickBooks that needs to be a tied to the transaction. So a purchase order would have a vendor and a bill would have a vendor, a estimate would have a customer. <clears throat> Some other things have an employee, not as common. Um, you know, the biggest thing is invoice and customer. And <clears throat> so just got pulling the customers here. I'm gonna have to do one thing. Let me just show the line item. So here's like a typical line item. You know, you're gonna have all your stuff in here too. The this is um, gonna be pretty much needed too. Although you can do a line item for an invoice without having like an item reference back to QuickBooks Desktop. So let's just say you're selling. What am I doing here? Pumpkins pumpkin pie and on QuickBooks desktop you for accounting reasons you, uh, your customer just wants to have a thing called product in QuickBooks so QuickBooks has <clears throat> I think I have one for Jane Doe don't I transactions oh, here's some invoices here um, let's just open up one of these invoices. So an invoice in QuickBooks would be like, like this. Um, the item you have in QuickBooks, it's like this, the pool cover, whatever this is, like here's manual cover. You might have labor line item and they associate to it a, a product. The product might be uh, they, they call it items in QuickBooks, but it might be a service, it might be the pull covers, different kinds of pull covers, the manual pull cover. And they're going to want to have a way, your customer's going to have a way to get those items. You're going to need, almost always need to have like an association screen. Like I have a little bit of that, of that in here. Like you're going to have a, a main QuickBooks screen. And you know, you'll have like this API key information. You'll have some importing, and I'm going to need to import the Quick, QuickBook items here. You're going to have associations here. Um, more in depth, they'll usually be drop downs like pool covers in our app equals red pool covers here, or, you know, um, usually it's a little more broad. Your app might have more details on products. And you need to make these associations because they're going to want to have the invoices in your app line up correctly so that usually you have your customers kind of um, decide wh where they want things to go in their QuickBooks desktop and that's the association section. I'm going to go ahead and import in because <clears throat> I'm going to need them to do an invoice. So here I'm doing an iterator query just like what we did for the customers. Let's look at the queue. So it just looks like that. Okay. And we already went over that, so we don't need to do over it again. Let's now get those items over here. Now again, we're stuck here at 79. That's because I always send back 99 in, the, in my progresses. And I don't care because here's the activity right here. Like, no, nobody, there's no way to exit out of it anyway. So like your your customer's not gonna like kill something, <clears throat> not easily. I guess can you hit that? <clears throat> Perhaps, I don't know. Um, let's go back over to the app now and go to items, and <clears throat> here's the items that we're pulling down. Um, I, I you know what I think that was actually blank for this sample company, even though they had some items here. I don't think these are real. These are just maybe just manual. Are these? Hmm. 
I don't know where I pulled these from. And why I'm getting, oh, you know, maybe I'm only taking a certain subset. Here's item list. Yeah, I'm only taking certain subset, like if they didn't have, because I only wanted three to come down. You know, here you can see labor. There you go. There's like labor and stuff, but I, I'm only taking a certain amount. Where am I? Down, right? Just so it was easy for me to work with. And I'm taking some of the usual suspects and saving the QBD full name. So when you have a list resource, which items is, customers is, vendors is, employees is, um, maybe chart of accounts you're going to bring in, you know, save a good amount of that information. Um, in this case, you're going to save the QBD full name. I'm going to save the QBD ID again. Maybe again, that's a little um, debatable whether you have to do it. Now you see how I'm using it quite a bit to generate queries and stuff. So um, I, I would just go ahead and do it. But here I need to bring these in. So what typically your customer would do is now they're going to now we ha we all have a drop down box of QB desktop items and then your apps items and then they'll make a little association. So when they make an invoice and make pumpkin pie, it goes to what they intended here. Um, if they start messing around a lot with this, um, you want to maybe have a policy in your, uh, that there, you have an incident fee. If, if accountants are getting in there and messing up the items because it's going to mess up all your stuff and they're going to say, um, uh, anyway, that's kind of down the road generating support tickets, but um, let's stay on task here. So let's go and make an invoice <clears throat> now that we have the items. And uh, let me throw another number, another two. I'm gonna do that. Let's do um, John Doe this time. Okay, the work on the pumpkin pie is gonna be five hours at uh, 12 an hour, not taxable. Um, we'll say fin change will be like sort of like a labor thing there. And then the actual pumpkin cake is here, 20 of those at, let's say it's good cake, so it'd be $18.99. And that's gonna be, you know, it'll be freight here, but you get the idea. So let's submit that in. And in my app, again, I'm making a row in the queue to add or modify. Again, that logic, you determine that logic when you cut, when this comes in for the request, you cut the XML, you determine whether it's an add or mod request. And um, let's stop here, because I want to go to the next video. We're going to go run this. Then we're going to go run the mod request. And I'm going to show you that little thing you need to know about uh, an invoice mod request.